Okay, I, I trunk it, I trunk the, the name a little bit. So it's now practical firmware reverse engineering using Python. It's easier to say, and it's a very fast tutorial because there's a lot of stuff. To say. Okay, uh, space. Today we'll re we'll talk about the reverse engineering of the firmware of this device. Uh, it's a Uniden Bearcat BC two two hundred ninety six D. It's it went out in two thousand and six and it's still cutting edge today. Uh, it's a multi-band frequency scanner, it supports digital at code 25, uh, 9,600 volts, which is pretty, it's, it's well, in well in place now. Uh, it supports the trunking. Uh, it can be enhanced with an FM discriminator tab, so you can uh, only have the FM output of the device without all the decoding. And it even has a light. If you hold it, that's pretty useful. <laughs> No, yeah, 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 it's a killer feature. <laughs> why, why reverse this device in particular? Uh, the machine, the, the machine locks some bands. So if you look at what you can scan with it, there's limitations. Do we like them? Nope. Uh, <laughs> FCOP25 is getting very popular in Quebec. We have a new network which is called the Rainier. Uh, it's a digital radio signal uh, network that's used by service public services. Uh, expect the uh, SPVM to go on it pretty soon. Uh, it's kind of old since it's from 2006, so there are firmwares of it available. It helps a lot. And in October 9, 26, the 2006, there's a guy that says it will take a concerted effort by a large group of individuals, cognizant in embedded system and assembly language, to figure out how the entire firmware works. I don't think you will, if we will ever see this. It's uh, 600 bytes, uh, kilobytes of assembly, it's not that much, including the data part. So uh, that, that, it's a good incentive. So uh, reversing. So uh, technically, how do we start to reverse such kind, of, such kind of a device? Since we have firmware update, the, the first step, the first easy step is to download the firmware file and look at it. So it's not that fun, is it? It's a good architecture. Uh, je vais en parler un peu. Okay. Console. So this is what you get when you open the uh, firmware file. Well, it's pretty interesting. You say, oh, it, it has a sense. It's it's not random data. It's pretty much exa and looks like looks like you gotta have something that you can read. It's not in. It's not in binary, binary format. This is a human readable. So it's <laughs> <laughs> some human readable. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so we make some kind of, I, I did some kind of Googling and I figure out that this is uh, Motorola S3 cores. It's, uh, do you talk about? yeah, it's used to burn EEPROMs. It's a format developed by Motor Motorola in the 68K time. Uh, it's validated by a checksum, so each S3 card sh should have a valid checksum, and it should be human readable for the ASCII part. So if you take the bytes in there, and turn them to ASCII, you should see text, as simple as that. So if you if you boot up the machine, it says Uniden Bearcat, so we should be able to see this if we turn that to, to text, simply. Uh, so I developed a little library which is called PySRec, uh, it's a general purpose S3 core library, it was a tool to use it. Uh, it parses the file, that it is to check some, and you can perform some forensics in that, adding offsets, moving data, extracting, calculating, and validating checksums. And it's GPL, it's on, it's on GitHub, and let's see what it looks like. <coughs> Library. Uh, kudos to Montreal CSSP groupies who comes in masses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at the presentation. Uh, takes the data from a website where you can uh, where you can have the specs of the uh, the format. 
I just kind of a lid that mangles the stuff. So uh, have a look at it if you really wish. I put some cute comments so you can use help function. Uh, I find it useful. Uh, there's also a little tool called Estric Parser that comes with it. So you can uh, output the file to human readable, wrap around characters, disable checksum. Useful stuff to do when you're handling those kinds of files. Okay, uh, back to our, uh, you can see back to our Estric file. It's not my laptop, so. <laughs> so technically, as they say, it should be human readable. So let's do let's do a little test. Let's take our file bcd. Uh, let's say I want to have line count, uh, data only because there is address types and checksum. I just want to see the data and uh, human readable. And let's go. Then the file fails. <laughs> so we, it's kind of exciting. It's <laughs> okay, so as we see, it's clearly human readable. Uh, def uh, defining on the format I, I used, we should be able to search for something like u dot n dot e dot n unit n. Oh no, it's not. Uh, you cannot find it. So it's it's weird because it's not readable as it should be. So the first. I think the first thing you need to try is to validate the checksum. So, because all the lines should be validated by the last byte. So, let's try if it works. Oh, it was already on. So, uh, yeah, there are bad. <laughs> okay. So, it's not human readable. So, what we're going to do is escape again. <laughs> and we're gonna add a little offset to all the bytes just for fun. Uh, let's say, no, no, usually I go from 0 to 255 and I read them all. It's fun. But, uh, let's see. Today we'll uh, use something more conservative like 8086 just for fun. <laughs> so, uh, fail again, maybe. Can you get control plus to make it bigger? Maybe. <coughs> ah. Ooh, uh, well, now it's bigger than my screen, that's not that. I'm really good. <laughs> okay, so it still looks weird. Uh, I think it is, it's still, technically, uh, I've taken the other file so we can work if it doesn't work. Okay, it's, it's still a bad offset from my description. No, it, it will work because uh, I should, be, uh, should see the version, uh, version number. Let's just try this. No, it's, it's not the right offset. Maybe it's like 87, let's try it just to be sure. Yeah. It's something around that, but anyway, I have the, I have the converted file. So it's still fine. It's good. <laughs> okay, let's forget about it. Usually when you find the offset, it's there. You, you've got to escape your periods to search. No, 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 that's all right for that. Uh, yeah, I did it a lot. Uh, say 86, but it's just not the good one. Uh, technically, if we punch the right offset, the one I forgot, we will really find Uniden, every menu, everything that is a data, but other junk. So uh, usually, when I did that, I, f I just went from 0 to 225, and another offset, I found some more text. So basically, it's it's like a rot 13, but at different, yeah, it is. It's a rot something at different place for different block size. So uh, we need a better way to find this. It's a good. So introducing you BC VOIP, the uh, Uniden uh, provided update software. It's pretty cool. No, it's not. Uh, so try to update the firmware. Just start the, the software. Try to. Uh, we don't add it. Uh, when I started this, I didn't add it. So, in any way, you can flash it more than once. So, it's not really visible to work on that. So, oh, programming error. No, no shit. We, uh, <laughs> we didn't even have a device plug to uh, make sense. So, uh, screw it. Let's reverse the BCVOP uh, EXE. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> using uh, IDA, uh, I've been able to prove that the program that the program that it's used to write text file to a serial port 
is five times more complex than 7-zip. <laughs> and there's around 200 routines like that. It's uh, four megs of compiled C++, dozens of compiled It's a total logical mess. Never leave an electrical engineer with a C++. <laughs> Never. And this software writes a file to the serial port, and it applies a rotation on bytes. It's, uh, it's complex. It supports all their scanners, but mm, I'm sure there's good uh, software pattern that has been forbid forgotten. So what is the strategy? Write a Python tool to mock the scanner. Reverse the update procedure using the live debugger of IDE, which is easier because we know what we're going to expect, so we're going to be able to at least put breakpoints in that file. Save the output to a file. This is a totally decoded file that should go directly to this machine. Diff the files to discover the, the different offset. We skipped this part today because it's a little bit long. And test if everything works. It seems easy. So, Bearmock. Uh, I wrote another tool which is called Bearmock. It's basically a Python tool that mocks a scanner. It supports almost all Uniden scanners. Uh, you need to use it with a COM port loopback, like COM0, COM under Windows, or anything you can symlink in Linux. So basically it's just, it opens two COM ports, 11 and 12, when you can listen to one and write to the other, and you can just mock, you can, the computer is gonna believe that he's talking to a device. Um, so the code looks like this. This one is a lot more, is a lot less uh, professional. So it, was, uh, it was fast, a quick act, it looks well. Mm -hmm. So basically, it emulates a protocol. Uh, oh, I did it, it's pretty easy. Just, I think this is the next slide. No one did touch. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So it looks like this when it works. I need Windows, so uh, we won't see it working. But basically, you see what we receive uh, by putting breakpoints in the in the tool. We I figure out how uh, just sending the right stuff until the things update upload the firmware, the decoded firmware. So uh, back to the bat console. <laughs> Thank you for the soundtrack. <laughs> okay, so now it just ran, and it gives us a file which is decoded that x is 19. <coughs> so this is how it looks like when it's decoded. This looks a little better, isn't it? No, so it's S's. It's this, basically the, the, S, the S stuff is the same, the address are the same, but the checksum change, so the data change also, and the checksum is still valid if we test it. You say, oh, you got it acute there, didn't you? That's not a problem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Line. That's right. So you see, it it's it doesn't crash. So <laughs> the the checksums are va are valid. So. We're sure that the software applies some kind of transformation and put back a new checksum. So it's just there to fool you. Uh, so now let's let's have a look at it. Human readable. <laughs> oh, version three point six zero. If we go to our little string, yeah, Uniden, Bearcat, PCD. So basically, this file is totally decoded, it's, it's usable, and we, we can go cycle through it. Uh, there's a fun part at this point. When you go through it, and you go to line, let's see. <coughs> yeah, I think it's something like that. <laughs> this one is good in the presentation. We're, but we don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, offsets, it's get lost. Wait, step? 8518. Okay, that's fine. You have this little string, M16C62P. What is this? This is the uh, MCU that runs the device, so it's pretty useful for the next step. This is basically the CPU in the machine. So what we're looking at it is the it's the part of the code that handles the firmware upload. So you don't mess with that part. So remember this. Okay. 
This is uh, MCU by Renaissance. The, the cool thing is that they offer, they gladly offer an emulator and a workbench for it, and it supports S record files. This is a cute screenshot of the about screen, if you doubt. Uh, it runs. If you load the, the S record file through their workbench, the proof is that it works. I can have it running so we can get it through. There's a sad part. IDE doesn't support this MCU, so I need someone to, to, who is willing to add this support in IDE. Uh, I need to release the tool because I have a tool in the work that will take a decoded file, it makes an encoded file so you can break your scanner like a pro. Um, and now we're actually at Mother Femora and Conquer Pony Lab. So that's it. Hope oh. you liked it. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> on GitHub, so if you really like this kind of stuff, you can download the source code. Any questions? No, that's good. <laughs>